something massive and mysterious is plowing through our solar system and the things nobody is telling you are truly shocking. The object, known as 3i Atlas, is not behaving like any comet on record. What if an interstellar object whirling through our solar system is actually a nuclear-powered spacecraft sent by aliens to test how humans respond? It has a chemical fingerprint that shouldn't exist, it's on a trajectory with odds of less than five in 100,000, and it's so massive it defies all known models of interstellar objects. We have uncovered seven deeply unsettling facts that prove this visitor is anything but ordinary. What we found will challenge your understanding of what's flying through the cosmos. Following a 40-year-old echo. You see, the telescope's beam was less than a degree wide, making the original signal incredibly localized. Now, decades later, Comet Atlas shows up and its approach trajectory lands it just outside that narrow window in the exact same general patch of sky. At first glance, this proximity sounds uncanny. Nine degrees is a tiny fraction of the night sky, less than 1% of the entire celestial sphere. Many people are crazy about this connection, pointing out that in the vastness of space, this is like two ships passing in the night in the same square foot of a massive ocean. However, the thing nobody tells you is that in astronomical terms, nine degrees is still a considerable distance. It's not nearly close enough to suggest any kind of physical link between the comet and whatever sent the signal. To give you some perspective, the full moon is only half a degree wide in the sky. So we're talking about a gap of 18 full moons between the comet's path and the signal's origin. Furthermore, no repeat of the radio burst has ever been recorded in the vast gulf of time and space. Nearly 50 years and quadrillions of miles makes a direct connection all but impossible from a mainstream scientific perspective. Still, the coincidence has proven irresistible, becoming a cornerstone of the mystery surrounding Atlas. It constantly appears in podcasts, internet message boards, and even some speculative scientific papers. Statistically, with only three known interstellar visitors to date, Oumuamua, Borisov, and now Atlas, any kind of directional overlap stands out dramatically. But what many overlooked is the warning from professional astronomers against reading too much into it. With thousands of potential alignments in the sky, from pulsars to ancient supernovae, patterns like this are bound to emerge by pure chance, especially when people start searching for meaning after the fact. This is a textbook case of what's known as posterior selection bias. The very human tendency to notice patterns and declare them significant only after the outcome is already known. It's an eye-catching detail for sure, but one with no real diagnostic power. It's just a cosmic coincidence that keeps the mystery alive as we turn to the harder physical puzzles. But this strange alignment is just the beginning of the comet's bizarre story. The orbit of 3i Atlas cuts almost perfectly flat through the solar system. Its inclination, which is the angle of its orbit relative to the plane where all the planets travel, is measured at just over three degrees above the ecliptic. To call this a razor-thin alignment would be an understatement. For context, most interstellar objects are expected to arrive from wild, steep angles, dropping in from high above or deep below the solar plane like cosmic curveballs. The first interstellar visitor, Oumuamua, crossed our path at a staggering 122 degrees. The second one, Borisov, came in at 44 degrees. Both were on sharply sloped paths, exactly as our models predicted, but not Atlas. This object's trajectory hugs the very same disk where Earth and all the other planets travel, moving almost parallel to our own orbit. The thing is, this is an incredible statistical anomaly. The odds of a random interstellar visitor arriving within five degrees of the ecliptic plane are calculated to be less than one half of one percent. That's a staggeringly low number. Think about it this way. If you were to throw a thousand random darts at a globe, the chance of one hitting the thin line of the equator is incredibly slim. That's what we're seeing here. Calculations from the Minor Planet Center and JPL Horizons confirm the precise inclination. 3.18 degrees with an error margin of less than 1 20th of a degree. Under standard models, only about four out of every thousand interstellar objects would ever be expected to match this alignment by pure chance. Of course, some astronomers point to a potential observational bias. 
Our Earth-based surveys are naturally most sensitive to objects crossing near the ecliptic because that's where we're looking most of the time. But even when scientists account for this effect in their models, the flat approach of Atlas still stands out as a massive outlier. With just three confirmed interstellar visitors so far, the pattern is bizarre and hard to ignore, steep, steep, and then perfectly flat. The geometry itself raises a whole host of questions. Is it just a mind-boggling coincidence? Is it a selection effect we don't fully understand? Or more tantalizingly, is it a clue to some deeper unknown dynamics governing interstellar travel? For now, the low inclination path remains a profound statistical mystery. This strange path is what set the comet up for its even stranger planetary encounters. Unlocking the secrets in the light. Next, we have to talk about polarization, which is a property of light that tells astronomers how it scatters off a comet's dust. This scattering reveals crucial details about the size, shape, and even the composition of those tiny grains. And for 3i Atlas, the early polarization reports have triggered a firestorm of debate across the entire field of astronomy. You see, what observers found was, to put it mildly, completely backward. Using powerful instruments like the Nordic Optical Telescope and Gemini North, they logged polarization values that remained strongly negative even at viewing angles where every other known comet flips to positive. Here's what that means in simple terms. At a Sun-Comet Earth angle of 30 degrees, the measured polarization of Atlas dipped below minus 2%. This is an extreme reading for any comet, let alone a visitor from another star. Normally, comets only show this negative polarization at very small viewing angles when the sun is almost directly behind the observer. As that angle widens, the signal is supposed to turn positive. The inversion point, where the polarization crosses from negative to zero, usually happens somewhere between 20 and 25 degrees. Beyond that, a typical comet's dust scatters light in a way that lines up perpendicular to the incoming sunlight, creating positive polarization. But Atlas completely defies this rule. Its dust seems to do the exact opposite, holding on to those deeply negative values well past the expected threshold. This wasn't a fluke. The instrument teams double and triple checked for calibration errors, atmospheric interference, and even stray light from the planet Mars which was nearby in the sky at the time. But the numbers held firm. The effect was repeatable across multiple nights of observation and on different telescopes using different filters. Such persistent negative polarization hints that the dust grains making up the comet's coma have a very unusual structure. They might be large, extremely fluffy aggregates, almost like cosmic snowflakes or they could have a composition that is far richer in carbon or complex organic materials than most comets in our own solar system. Some researchers have drawn parallels to a few rare, carbon-rich comets seen decades ago, but even those failed to sustain negative polarization at such wide angles. The anomaly is still being studied, but the data has already completely shifted the conversation. If this is confirmed, these bizarre optical properties would mark 3i Atlas as chemically distinct from anything we know. This strange glow is a clue to the comet's even stranger ingredients. Spectroscopic surveys of 3i Atlas have uncovered a chemical fingerprint that simply refuses to fit into any standard comet template. When astronomers break down the light from a comet, they can see the chemical elements it's made of, like a cosmic barcode. Early spectra from ground-based telescopes showed incredibly strong emission lines of neutral nickel. This is a heavy metal, and while it's been seen in comets before, something was deeply wrong here. The usual signatures of iron, which is chemically very similar to nickel and almost always appears alongside it, were practically absent. In a typical solar system comet, nickel and iron appear together. Their spectral lines rise and fall in tandem as the comet's nucleus heats up and sheds metal-rich dust. It's a predictable partnership, but what many overlooked in the initial reports about Atlas was this shocking imbalance. The nickel lines were clean, sharp, and persistent, while iron lagged far behind, barely detectable even when astronomers stacked multiple long-exposure images to try and find its faint signal. The signal-to-noise ratio for nickel crossed the threshold for a robust, confident detection. Yet iron remained stubbornly weak, an imbalance never before seen in cometary spectra. 
Naturally, the analysts went back and combed through all the raw data, desperately checking for calibration errors or atmospheric contamination that might have skewed the results. But the pattern held up across multiple nights of observation and with different instruments. They also found that the standard cometary signatures of carbon and cyanide were present, but they were unusually subdued. This suggests a dust and gas mixture that is far richer in certain heavy metals and poorer in the volatile organic compounds that we typically see. This bizarre composition, if it's confirmed by follow-up observations with the James Webb Space Telescope, would mark a sharp departure from the norm. Metal-rich, iron-poor comets are exceptionally rare even in the outer reaches of our solar system and are completely unknown among interstellar visitors. This weird chemistry has profound implications for both the object's origin and its strange optical behavior. Unusual metal ratios can completely alter how sunlight scatters through the coma, which could help explain the bizarre polarization we just talked about. If this nickel dominance is an intrinsic property of the comet, it could point to it being formed in a star system with a radically different chemical history than our own, or perhaps it underwent some kind of selective processing as it traveled for millions of years through interstellar space. The missing iron stands as a critical forensic clue, deepening the mystery of what 3i Atlas is made of. What force is pushing this comet's dust? The most visually arresting and frankly baffling feature of 3i Atlas is a plume that appears to stream forward directly toward the sun. This geometry completely upends the textbook image of a comet that we've all seen since grade school. You see, in standard cometary physics, the solar wind, a constant stream of charged particles from the sun, always sweeps a comet's dust and gas away from its nucleus. This sculpts the iconic tail that always points away from the sun, no matter which direction the comet is moving. It's a fundamental rule. But here, time series imaging from world-class observatories like Gemini South and the Nordic Optical Telescope captured a faint, fan-like extension jutting sunward. It almost looked as if the comet were venting steam directly from its leading edge, straight into the face of the solar wind. And this wasn't just some trick of the eye or a momentary illusion. Analysts carefully traced the plume's orientation across multiple nights, factoring in the comet's own rotation and the constantly shifting angle of the sunlight. The forward-facing jet held steady even as the overall coma brightened and the main, conventional tail began to unfurl behind it. Now, there are rare situations where something called a projection effect can make a tail look like it's pointing the wrong way. These are called anti-tails, and they happen when Earth's line of sight slices through a comet's orbital plane at just the right angle. But the thing is, the geometry here defies that easy explanation. The plume's alignment with the Sun-Comet axis persisted through a wide range of viewing angles, resisting the usual explanations tied to perspective or orbital tilt. Some researchers have pointed to rare precedents, like comets with very active vents located right at the subsolar point, the spot on the nucleus getting the most direct sunlight, or comets with jets triggered by sudden explosions of buried pockets of volatile ice. But even these rare cases almost never produce a forward-facing fan this distinct and this far from the sun. The mechanics of such a jet raise even deeper questions. If the outgassing is strong enough to launch dust and debris sunward, why doesn't the solar wind immediately and violently sweep it back? Is the nucleus spinning in a way that perfectly channels these jets along its orbital path? Or is there some kind of transient vent that's only exposed at certain rotational phases? The incredible size of 3i Atlas stands as its most jarring statistical outlier. Early photometric modeling, which draws on the brightness of its coma and the faint glint of the nucleus itself, returned a mind-boggling diameter close to 5 kilometers, or about 3 miles. That is more than three times wider than either of the previous interstellar visitors, Oumuamua and Borisov. The mass calculations, which are anchored in standard assumptions about its reflectivity and the observed rate of sunlight it reflects, yield an estimate of over 33 billion tons. By every single measure, this is a true heavyweight. It's a body that dwarfs not just Oumuamua and Borisov, which were both less than a kilometer wide, but nearly every comet we have ever seen entering from outside our solar system. 
So is 3i Atlas a one in a trillion natural coincidence, or is its perfect trajectory a sign of something more? Let us know what you think below, and don't forget to like and subscribe.